Let's say this sausage represents men. Sometimes hard, sometimes soft, but always ready to go. And let's say these biscuits represent women. Light, flaky, sometimes buttery, and depending on who you ask, they could either be good or bad for you, and sometimes best in moderation. So now, as a sausage, you want to balance things out with some biscuits. And you say, man, I could really go for some biscuits right now. But instead of biscuits, here comes your good friend, sausage. Yay, more sausage. Wasn't exactly what you had in mind, but you'll make the best out of the situation. You'll grill out and tell stories about conquest and other dumb things and complain about how much you hate biscuits and yet you want biscuits around you all at the same time. So now you've got this sausage has joined with this sausage and you're like, oh, we would like to have some biscuits. It would really be nice to balance things out, to have a different perspective, a different taste in the mix, in the meal, have some biscuits. And instead of getting more biscuits, ta-da, you just get more sausage. And ladies and gentlemen, what you end up with is one big sausage fest. You just wanted some biscuits. The whole meal didn't have to consist of biscuits. You understand that the majority of the meal, the staple of the meal, may very well be the sausage. But some biscuits are a nice touch. They add some variety to the meal. This brings you protein and sodium, and this brings you carbs and other things. One on its own, okay. The other one as a complimentary piece, even better. I use this analogy to help illustrate what the WWE is getting ready to do. Now, I was very happy last month when the company came out and announced this women's WrestleMania Battle Royal and they decided to name it after the fabulous moolah, they knew. They knew. And worst of all, clearly, they didn't care. The only time that they cared was when the people started to care and they cared enough to where it really got buzzing and eventually a sponsor like Snickers had to get involved and say, hey, we don't want to be associated with that. Then all of a sudden the WWE got themselves a little bit of a conscience and said, hey, you know what? We're just going to call it the WrestleMania Women's Battle Royal. Because even though you have those that have come out since and defended Fabulous Moolah, there is still a long history of track record of others who have made allegations against her, which seem logical and sensible when you look at the bigger picture. So even if you only want to believe some of them, none of them, or all of them, it still calls into question if this is the type of person that you should be memorializing and honoring, which is exactly what you would be doing by naming a battle royal after her at your biggest show of the year. It's maybe not the best look, especially when you're a company who is pretending like you're the first ever company that's ever cared about women's wrestling and this whole women's revolution. Never mind what TNA or anybody else did with their women over the years. WWE's now decided they wanted to do it. They're the first and they're the best and they're the only ones by God. And this is the MO of them. But it is what it is. And frankly, it comes down to that thing of you had gotten to the point with the company where these women, for the most part, really didn't serve a purpose if you weren't going to do anything meaningful with them. So either get rid of them, or if you're going to have them, then they deserve the right and opportunity to have a chance. They deserve the right and opportunity to not be cast aside. They deserve the right and opportunity to be able to become stars because, by God, throughout the history of wrestling, you've had several women that have went on to become big-time mainstream household name stars. That's a fact. So it's ridiculous when you're in the variety show business to not want to give something to everyone. Women, young girls watching the show might want to see some women every once in a while. Guys want to see some women every once in a while. Again, if it's all sausage, it's no good. It's all biscuits, not the same. Get some type of mixture, sausage base with your biscuit complement. The meal goes a lot better. 
So, coming off of the heels of WrestleMania 34 and all the outrage over naming the Women's Battle Royal after the Fabulous Moolah and then changing your mind because Snickers got involved. After WrestleMania, where you had not one, not two, but three featured matches that on the main card that had women in them. Three of them. Including one that had one of your top-ranking executives in the entire company in Stephanie McMahon, the boss's, the owner's daughter, and your biggest acquisition that you've made in quite some time in Ronda Rousey, who went out there and to a lot of people's accounts, including mine, was a pleasant surprise and damn near tore the house down. Then you had a SmackDown Women's Championship, a Raw Women's Championship match. At WrestleMania, three women's matches. So at least you can say, to a certain degree, when it comes to trying to treat your women better and trying to make them a more equivalent part of the equation or at least giving them purpose and meaning and significance, you had three main card matches plus a battle royal that featured most every other woman in the company. That's four matches during that WrestleMania show. Not to mention having a women's championship match on NXT, da 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 It's a step in the right direction. Got a ways to go, but it's a step in the right direction. But now the WWE is going to have their greatest Royal Rumble ever in freaking Saudi Arabia. And what's big and significant about that, you ask? If you've noticed, looking at the announced match card, it's your friend Sausage, joined by your other friend Sausage. Joined by guess who? Even more Sausage. You're looking for biscuits. Nowhere to be found. Women aren't going to be allowed to compete there. Well, I don't even know if they'll even be allowed to be in the damn venue. And before these idiots sit here and try to talk about this as some Islamic phobic thing, shut up. Because you have places such as UAE that allowed the women of WWE to perform the last time they're there. Now, this is about a country being backwards in terms of even the most basic of fundamental of human rights and the way that they treat their women. And how ridiculous it is to me that the WWE coming off of the heels of WrestleMania, where the women were an important part of their show, after these years of sitting there and pumping all this hypocritical BS about the women's revolution and how much women matter, especially looking ahead potentially to a WrestleMania next year, where it's very possible, if not likely, that your main event is going to revolve around women. You decide to take a step back several hundred damn years by going to Saudi Arabia? where your women can't even perform to do this greatest Royal Rumble ever? Give me a break. Where is the outrage over this? I mean, we're going to be outraged over a name of a freaking battle royal that ended up being on the damn pre-show. At least you could say the women were at least allowed to perform. They're not even allowed to perform here. Where is the freaking outrage? Where is the Twitter fire? Where are the sponsors saying we don't want to be associated with this? And don't give me this crap of, well, if you go there, eventually it helps to change things. Bullshit! Bullshit! Going there with none of your women there and abiding by exactly what they want doesn't change a damn thing. You sit there and tell them that they either make an exception and they allow your women to compete even if they are fully covered and you work through all of those details. You tell them either... They compete, or we go somewhere else. That's where you make the statement. It's bad enough that this country is bent over, grabbing our ankles for generations for a country like Saudi Arabia, because gotta get that all, oh, bitches, ah, oh, ah, oh, ah, oh. and look, a, turn a blind eye to everything involving a Saudi Arabia or an Israel or what have you. But beyond all of that, this comes down to the fundamental hypocrisy of how in the hell, how in the bluest of blue fucks can you pretend like you care about your women? How in the hell can you sit there with a straight face and talk about this women's revolution and how important it is with a company who knowing someday most likely not only was your former CEO the boss's wife, Linda McMahon, Someday, it's going to be the boss's daughter, Stephanie McMahon, and she herself is a high-ranking executive in the company. One of your newest, biggest, potentially brightest stars in the company also happens to be female. You had women perform at several matches at WrestleMania, and they were not the drag on the card. Now, a few weeks later, you take a step back? 
into the freaking dark ages? So you could go to freaking Saudi Arabia. Why? Just so that way you can find some damn country that you don't have to worry about Roman getting booed out of the damn building? Are you insane? Is it that bad and you're that secure, insecure about Roman Reigns to where after a year of building up to it, you lack the courage and the balls to sit there and pull the trigger at WrestleMania just so that way you do this greatest Royal Rumble ever crap where you can control the freaking crowd, assume they don't know any better, so that way the reaction goes better. It matters, but it doesn't matter. Make up your freaking mind. And in the meantime, what the hell statement are you sending to your women's roster by saying, you know what, you matter, but you really don't matter. None at all. Oh, but, but that's right. I'm the fucking sexist here. I'm the pig here. Well, you know what, call me whatever the hell you want. But if you were going to complain about the name of a battle royal, legitimately so, there should be way more outrage about this company on the heels of WrestleMania going to a country that won't even allow these women to perform. It's bad enough over the years in WWE. It's primarily been one of these. A freaking sausage fest. How about you go where we can have biscuits? And if the place you intend on going doesn't allow you to have biscuits, then you go somewhere else that does. Because otherwise you're hypocrites and it's bullshit. And if the sponsors want to get mad about a naming of a battle royal, they should be up in arms about this crap. And frankly, so should the fans that sat there and complained about a damn battle royal.